Okay, we got a big adventure today. What are we doing, Janice? We're in the Paracas National Reserve, which is where the desert meets the ocean. And then later, and what are we doing? We're going on a very small airplane, holds 12 people, and we're flying over the Nazca Lines, which are thousands of years old, and no one knows exactly how they could be made because you can only view them from the sky. So stay tuned. started the day at Paracas National Reserve, which is a protected area located in the region of Inca, Peru. It has a striking coastal desert. We started our fossil walk, and some of those fossils are as old as 46 million years old. We also visited the red sandy beaches. We saw turkey vultures flying overhead. Okay, Stephen Key here, and I want to talk a little bit about why most inventors fail at this. They do not succeed at bringing their ideas to market and and there's multiple reasons and the reason why i know this so well um i talked to a lot of inventors throughout my career visiting minty inventors groups and the failure rate is just so high it's tragic so i'm going to give um, some advice on how you can be successful at inventing your own products okay i think the number one reason why most inventors fail is they buy into the notion they have a million dollar idea and that's gonna get stolen. And they actually like to hear that. Um, and they hear that um, through their friends saying, hey, this is a great idea, you better protect it. Uh, maybe they visit a patent attorney and the patent attorney says the same thing. Hey, this is a great idea, you better protect it. Or maybe they're even watching Shark Tank and where they're always saying, hey, you need a patent. So it's really out of fear that they go ahead and they file a patent thinking that's all they need. And I think that's a big contributor for most inventors failing. So along with filing expensive patents, which can cost anywhere up to $25,000, they build prototypes because they want to see their baby come alive. And yes, that's really an exciting thing to do to see your invention, see your idea come to life by building a prototype. But I'm here to tell you, you do not have to build a prototype at the very beginning. Prototypes are expensive. Now, if you have the skills to build it yourself, be my guest, but you don't even have to prove if it works at the very beginning. So whoever's telling you that you need to have a prototype and that you have to prove that it works first, they're absolutely wrong. My philosophy is that you have to sell the benefit first if you cannot sell the benefit of your invention, why even build a prototype? There's another reason why most inventors fail at this. They think the only way to bring their idea to, to market is to start a business. And they probably don't have the experience, the time or money to even start a business. So they try to um, you know, save a little bit of money, maybe do it on a sho shoestring, maybe they even borrow money or maybe even go into debt. And because of that lack of experience, they think it's a money problem. It's never a money problem, it's a knowledge problem. Hey, we're at the airport. I'm not quite sure about this trip, but what are we doing, Jan? We are going up in a small plane shortly and we're flying over the Nazca lines. And we all took what? We all took basically some Dramamine because we've been advised that it could be a little rocky. But let's hope not. We're getting ready to go. I'm pretty excited. We flew to the Nazca Lines which are a series of designs and pictographs carved into the ground in the Nazca Desert, created by the Nazca Indians between 200 BC and 700 AD. It's so large, it can only be seen by the air. Here's another big one. People think that, um, they have a great idea, but they don't really test the market first to see if it's marketable. Holy smokes, can you imagine 
filing an expensive patent, starting a company, building expensive prototypes, but only to find that, hey, no one wants your idea. So I believe you need to test the market first to see if there's interest. Then maybe go ahead and file a provisional patent application. Then maybe go ahead and build a prototype. And then maybe go ahead and look at some of the other options, such as licensing. You do not have to start a business to bring your idea to market because most inventors are not entrepreneurs and they should never start a business. Most inventors think they have a million dollar idea and they end up not listening to anyone because they just know it for sure. And I hear this all the time. They go ahead and they explain to me why this is a million dollar idea. Oh, geez, you're going to need to come up with a lot of ideas. These ideas are not not your baby. They're not your, your child. They're just ideas. They're just inventions. And you're going to need to come up with a lot of them, not just one. So if you're spending years on one idea, you're doing it all wrong. All right, here's a big one. Most inventors think that if I, if I only get discovered, if I'm going to a trade show, set up a booth, someone's going to walk by and they're going to discover me. Or maybe I get on a popular TV show and someone's going to discover me. Or maybe there's a company out there that's going to do all the work for me. Huh, I'm here to tell you, you guys, you're the only person that matters. You can do this by yourself, but you're going to need a roadmap and you're going to have to be patient and you're going to have to listen to people that have done it before. Do not try to figure this out along the way. Like anything else in life, it takes time, it takes patience. You need to be persistent but you're gonna to have to do all the work yourself. I'm, hard, I'm, I'm sorry to say there's no magic person. The magic person is you. The next morning, we took a boat ride to the Ballestis Islands, which are a small group of small islands near the town of Paracas on the south border of Peru. These islands are known for their many caves and arches that serve as shelter to more than 1,500 species of marine birds. We also saw sea lions and penguins. People ask all the time, Steve, how do you know so much about this whole business? Well, I was just like you when I started out. I thought, gee, if you have a great idea, that's, always, that's all it's gonna take. But that's not truly the case. It takes knowledge, it takes experience. It just takes a lot of hard work. So, uh, but it also takes a roadmap. I believe you can do this yourself, but you're gonna have to put in the work and it's gonna take probably a little bit longer than you think. I've made every mistake you could possibly make and hopefully with these videos, you won't make as many as I've made. <music> Hi, right, this is Stephen Key. I'm here to tell you I had a great time in Peru, meeting some wonderful people, eating great foods, and learning the history of, um, of Peru and their people. So stay tuned for my next adventure. Mm -hmm.